Okay, so we are live now. Um, so, this meeting is being recorded. Uh, once again, if I can ask you just to put your sound on mute, that would be much appreciated. Feel free to leave your camera on, that's fine. Um, there will be an opportunity to um, unmute and have a bit of an open discussion at the end. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just kind of introduce, we have done this webinar before, but I'm going to give a really quick recap on where we're at um, and also introduce, obviously, our team for, for the game. So I'm going to give an update on some registration. So again, for you guys that have just joined, my name's Gary. I'm the sports director for SONS. I will be the competition manager for the event, and obviously swimming is one of our key sports. Um, I do have two other people in here I would like to introduce shortly, but just to give you a bit of a rundown on this session, um, conscious we've, we've allowed an hour, depending on questions um, and any, any other queries you guys might have, we might not use that full hour, but if we do, um, that's that's also fine. So I, I we'll give you some updates in a minute around our registrations. I will touch on the schedules, so we we can talk about the healthy athletes program, and also the actual swimming sports schedule. We'll talk about some resources from, you know, where can you guys go after this session? So what what else is there for you guys? And then. Some of you did submit questions when you registered with Kylie, so we will address those directly. Apologies if we've missed any out. Um, you will be able to unmute yourself and ask any other questions at that time as well. And then any time we've got at the end, um, more than happy to, to have a bit of open dialogue and maybe give you guys an opportunity to ask Dave um, some, some other questions. So introductions for those that don't know uh, i know there is a couple online that are new to to uh, swimming at their club dave Beatty is our technical director for the event so dave is online dave i can't see any i can't see anybody because i'm presenting but if you uh, want to give everybody a wave um so dave dave's gonna be uh, supporting me tonight just to talk through some of those niggly sports questions you guys might have. Dave is our expert on the ground. He's going to be uh, the quarterback for the event. So he'll be managing all our officials and anything to do with the sport um, at the summer games for swimming. And I'd also like to introduce Josie. Uh, Josie, again, I can't see you. Um, I know you're online, but if you could just give everybody a wave. Um, Josie is a Special Olympics New Zealand staff member. She is going to be our venue manager for swimming. So Josie and Dave are going to be um, a bit of a tag team. Dave will manage the sport. Josie will manage the venue. So in regards to venue, the, we're not going to talk too much tonight about venue, but Josie will oversee some of those logistics around um, buses, managing and coordinating our volunteers, lunches, meals, that type of stuff. Um, but again, Dave and Josie will both be working as a, a bit of a team um, for the full week at, at the games. Dave, do you have anything to add um, this time about yourself or your role before we crack in? Yeah, look, I'm, I'm going to be pretty much um, behind the scenes, um, as um, Gary mentioned, um, helping Josie and um, venue staff and so on to deliver um, you know, a first-class event. Um, but at this point, I'd just like to um, welcome and introduce to you... Uh, Sorry, guys. Could I just ask, um, if you put your microphone on, could I just ask you to mute, please? Thank you. Sorry, Dave. We 
I, th I think we've lost there. That's all right. Thank Carry you. on. Sorry, Dave. I think you froze on us there. I was just going to ask you just to, if you had anything to add before we started. Yeah. So yeah. No, I'd just like to introduce Sandra as our chief referee. Awesome. Thanks, Dave. Okay. I do think you're freezing a little bit, Dave. So what I'll do, I'll carry on, um, and hopefully you you can find a bit of a bit of Wi-Fi somewhere. Okay. That was me ten minutes ago, so I was panicking a little bit. Um, okay, so there's you know, two key contacts in regards to um, the sport right now. So before we get to the games, if you do have any questions queries around swimming from now rather come to myself and i can liaise with Josie around the venue logistics stuff or go directly to dave i do know some of you have already been working with dave around some questions um and some of them are really good questions which we'll, we'll also bring up for the for the wider group so just to give you some updated stats around where we are we have 240 athletes registered for the event in December and 101 team management. So where that, in relation to where we was last year, um, obviously pre-COVID and, and those things, we actually had 281 athletes registered and exactly 101 in the team management space. So um, we have lost 41 athletes. However, we, you know, I do feel like 240 is a really good um, number that are going to be taking and competing at nationals. So that was a question somebody brought up. I was planning on sharing that information anyway. Um, so looking at schedules, a lot of people are asking now, you know, we've got to submit times and all this type of stuff. When are our schedules going to be live? We are working through them now. There is a draft swimming schedule that's been done. Um, we are going to be waiting until you guys have had a final opportunity to submit the updated times and results by the 29th of October. Then we're going to lock in and confirm our schedule. We do think everything goes to plan. We'll have it live online and also emailed out to you guys the second week in November. One thing I can tell you now, which is some of you already know this um, from talking to your RSCs, the swimming competition will be running from the Friday through to the Monday. Okay, so that's nothing out the ordinary for you guys. In regards to specific time frames, we'll share that once the schedule is done. I don't want to share draft times now and then come back, you know, in two weeks' time and give you new times. I don't want to confuse you guys there. Um. That's that's where we're at right now with the schedule. Quick plug, um, please don't forget to submit your updated times, your results um, by the 29th of October. That information is in the um, registration booklet as well if you, if you need to re refresh on what that process looks like. So with our schedules, so we've got the sports schedule, but there's also the the HAPS program that's going to be um, based at the Claudelands Event Centre. Local clubs have already been invited to access the early sessions on a Thursday. So put this in your own context um, if you can. If you are a local club to the, in the Waikato region, there is some spots available for you to access on the Thursday. Okay, so you guys, if that's something you want to do, just have that in the back of your mind. Very conscious swimming is one of our busiest sports. Um, and some of the feedback we had previously was athletes who wanted to go through the HAPS didn't get an opportunity. So what we have done is look at those early times for the local clubs. On the Saturday and the Sunday, when the swimming finishes... There is going to be an opportunity for 100 athletes on each day to go to Claudeland straight from Waterworld and actually go through the haps there straight after on the Saturday or the Sunday. If the club decides that is a good option for them, 
we will make sure meals are provided at Claude Lens and you don't need to rush to get to your accommodation. So feedback from previous games was when swimmers and basketballers, uh, you know, the two busiest sports, when they, the athletes have finished, they've gone to the HAPS, volunteers and athletes, some have missed out on dinner because by the time they've got back to their accommodation, everything was gone and nobody had saved any food. So just want to reassure you here that if you do decide Saturday or the Sunday after the swimming session's finished, you want to register to go to HAPS, you will be fed. So that'll be athletes and volunteers. What I would ask is um, from here, email Stephen, uh, who was managing our hats. If you email him, he did tell me yesterday it is going to be on first, first in, first served. So I understand some of you might need to talk to others at your clubs. But look, give Stephen a, an email. He's, he's actively talking to clubs already. Um, I highly recommend you flick him an email and get your name down as quick as you can for the Saturday or the Sunday. Okay. If you do have any questions on HAPS and you can't wait to talk to Stephen, feel free to put them in the chat and we'll, we'll pick those up later on and I'll, I'll try my best to answer them for you. Okay. All right. Swimming resources. So, look, I, I again, I didn't really thank you guys at the beginning, but thank you very much for making the time to talk tonight. I believe the key to a good a good event is the communication leading in. Our games team are doing an awesome job, um, but now you know the coaches are coaches are starting to ask coach questions, sports questions. Um, for me, a lot of the information is on our website, so this session's awesome. We'll cover as many questions as we can. But if you um, are talking to people in your club and they have some questions or queries, please point them to the website. So the Summer Games website is is a screenshot on my screen now. Um, I'm seeing most of you have been on there. On the website itself, there is some pretty cool resources that Bev has helped me um, together. So we've got a bit of a general overview for swimming coaches. We've got some coaching tips. So one of the questions that did come up from a coach who is online, um, so welcome. I know this is, you've been thrown in the deep end a little bit by your club awesome that you are uh, volunteering i highly recommend you go to the swimming coaches tips because it's it's literally a, a frequently asked questions list that dave has put together um for you guys so and again if there's something that we we have missed you know ask tonight or talk to dave offline and he'll also um be able to answer any other questions okay um question Carla um apologies team I am trying to multitask good question so have resources been updated or are they the same as last year some of the documents have been updated okay so I know the FINA rules they've um been thrown online there wasn't there previously and Dave has done a refresh of the coaches tips and the overview okay so there is one or two changes on there um if there is something missing, please please sing out. Um, so the way I'm going to approach it, conscious of time, we do have some pre-populated questions that me and Dave have, have kind of answered. There is some that have been repeated from the previous web webinar. So we'll fly through them, and then there's a couple of new questions that we haven't answered before, and then I'll invite Dave to jump in and and add some information behind each of them. All right, but before I do, I do have a question for you guys to think about, and I'd love it if you could put the answers in the chat. Do you guys have any athletes that would like to take part in a 1500 meter demonstration? Okay, so I know some of you will be waiting on a schedule to answer that, to see whereabouts it will fit. If you are interested, please put your club name in the chat and we'll reach out to just to talk about specific athletes. So you don't need to name who will do it. If you have any athletes that might be keen to uh, take part in a 1500 meter demo, 
we'd love to hear from you because we want to start locking this stuff into the schedule. Okay. Yeah, Gary, I think um, important to point out we're looking at open water, 1500 meter. Yes, Dave. Sorry. Yeah. Thank you for that. Yeah. So slightly different or totally different to pool swimming. So yeah. that will be uh, swimming around four boys within the pool. Thanks, Dave. And Dave, do we have any, are we still thinking that would be towards the end of the competitions? Sorry, can you repeat? Are we still thinking that might be towards the back end of the, the schedule and the program? Yes, yes. Okay. Thanks, Dad. Um, thank you for putting that in the chat, you guys. Okay. And if you don't have an answer now, that's also fine. Um, you know, take it back to your clubs, your swimmers, even if you want to talk to them and come back to if you can sooner rather than later. Okay. All right. Sorry, guys, I think I froze there. Um, so one of the questions was around swimwear. So we did have this one in the past. Um, so the actual question was swimwear has been an issue for us in the past for my athletes. Can you confirm foot shorts and rash vests, etc.? So Talking to Dev um, and obviously Swimming New Zealand, there is a new inclusion policy that Swim New Zealand have brought out around um, swimwear. So, Dev, do you want to jump in there and maybe just touch on that a little bit? Yeah, certainly. Um, so, as Gary's um, said, that uh, Swim New Zealand's brought out a new policy called inclusive swimwear. And to be quite honest, uh, I think Special Olympics has uh, been ahead for a long time because we have um, had the provision or proviso for swimmers to wear additional swimwear for modesty, uh, medical, uh, cultural, um, uh, those sorts of reasons. So um, Swim New Zealand sort of caught up with this and um, we'd like to um, go by this new policy because it, it effectively um, allows our swimmers to wear any type of swimwear that they feel comfortable in. There are a couple of provisos though, though and I'll just quickly go through those. Um, so what we're saying is um, they don't have to wear FINA approved um, swimwear, swimwear any longer. Um, they can, uh, as I said, wear almost anything provided it's in good taste. Um, there's no advertising. Um, it's non-transparent. And the key thing is the, the uh, clothing must be made of uh, textile material. So they cannot be any buoyancy component, in other words, neoprene or polyurethane, anything like that. Um, the only other proviso is that um, there's no covering of the face uh, for obvious reasons. Um, and it's very strongly that, uh, suggested that you monitor the looseness of the uh, clothing or whatever they're wearing so that they don't or for example, become tangled, or it doesn't impede their progress. So we need to sort of be very mindful and uh, you know keep some common sense around all this. But essentially, what we'll be doing is um, excluding the U code, exception code U, um, and provided uh, you know the, the clothing is uh, reasonable and sensible, um, we'll go with it. Awesome. Thank you, Dave. Um, and what I will do, I will get a copy of the, the policy. It's actually a really good read from Swimming New Zealand. Um, Dave actually sent it through to me. So what I'll do, I'll, I'll make that available on our website, if that's of benefit to anybody, um, and feel free to share it on. Um, thank you, Dave. So I've touched on the exception codes. 
Uh, a couple of questions come through previously around exception codes and athlete swim times. What are they? Can you clarify? So for the coaches that are new, I do encourage you guys to go to the Regio booklet. Um, you have till October the 29th to change athletes' times and exception codes. Okay. And Dave, you might you might want to jump in here again, but codes can be changed on the day. And d this is something Dave would obviously touch on at the manager's meeting as well. Yeah, so um, thanks, Gary. So um, in the coaches' tips document, uh, there's a, um, um, a pretty good explanation there. Um, and look, we realise that sometimes uh, through no one's fault, um, the right code doesn't appear. So this is why um, there will be an opportunity for you to change a published exception code on the day. There'll be just a simple form to fill out um, and it's as simple as that. And, and the reason for this is that as officials, we go by what's on the program. Um, it's virtually our Bible. So if it says, if it's got a W against a swimmer's name, we know that swimmer has to start in the water. And that can be for a whole host of different reasons. Um, if, the, if the swimmer or someone else says, oh, you know, I, I don't reasons. I don't um, need to. Um, or someone else well, says, oh, so you know, we just I go back to the program and, I don't and we go by that. Um, well, I'm sorry, we just... I'm getting some feedback from somewhere. Sorry, Dave, that was, I've just muted somebody. Okay. Oh, cool. All right, so does that explain it? Um, look, I think the, at the end of the day, look, if, if it's not correct, it's not the end of the world. We can amend it. So... Um, we're there for the swimmers. We just want the very best for the swimmers and we'll make every attempt to get it correct. Thanks, Dave. Just, we've had a couple of questions come through, Dave, and I'm, I'm pretty confident with the technology at the minute. It's not dying on me. So, a question from Carla, and I know this is relevant for quite a few coaches. So sports bras under togs, Carla wouldn't need the U code no more? No, no. Okay, Clarifying that, I actually you know, think it's it's a really so, good thing. For example, two two pairs, uh, the males wearing two swimsuits, not a problem. Okay, and Elaine, I have your message here that the sound broke up, so the U code is no longer required um, because of the new Swim New Zealand policy. Okay, and I will share that if you guys have made a note of that there, along with Dad's coaching. And you get the link out. Hey, How's your training? Okay. So uh, this question came up uh, before, and it's come up at pretty much uh, every every time I've spoke to a swim coach. So it's all around the seating at Waterworld. Um, it is tricky as the steps are steep and somehow have no rails. Um, there's no seating, not much seating with a good view of the competition pool. It can be hard to view races. Some coaches were a little bit annoyed. Um, I think we're on about the Trans-Tasman here, but some coaches got annoyed when, when other coaches went in front of them to watch. Um, if you might jump again, I've, I've some notes on this here, just in case people forwarded on to other coaches in their club. Look, we're, we're not going to please everybody. We, we haven't fully locked in our stance on on what we're going to do to manage this. But one thing I can say is we're going to have a small area at the front where coaches can come and observe their races. And, and that's going to be in front of the seating area of the main pool. So me and Dave have spoke around that. We've been and done a venue check. There is some room what we will block off um, for coaches. That's not going to be somewhere where you will sit all day. That will be somewhere once you've, sent your athletes off to marshal, uh, marshalling round, you guys might be able to go and stand in there. Once the race is done, you'll go back to your seats. We are working around um, allocations of seats per club or looking at the idea around letting people pick where they, where they want to sit on any given day. Um, like I did say at the beginning, I don't think we're going to please everybody with this. Um, 
but it's just something we, you know, it's the hand we've been dealt. But just for you guys as coaches, um, you know, you, you guys are starting to think about the athlete support. You will have a space to observe the races at the front, regardless of where you're going to be set. Okay, so I hope that adds a bit of clarity to you guys there. I don't know if you've got anything to add on that, Bev, right now. No. Okay, must have lost you, Bev. Sorry, Gary, was that a question to me? Yeah, I was just seeing you had anything to ask, uh, to add around the seating at this time. I don't think you do. No, I think you've covered it pretty well. Okay. Okay, so another question that, that came up previously, it didn't actually come up this time around, but I just think it's important we we touch on for, especially for those new coaches. Um, PIDs and protests, can you let my coach know about it? So PIDs will be used for any improved performance time. So you, you will use these, and feel free to jump in here, Dave. You'll probably explain this a lot better than I do. Um, the key use is for your athletes that swim slower in the heats than they actually do on the entry time that you guys submit. Okay. Um, that'll avoid, that'll help obviously make sure your, your athlete doesn't get a DQ um, if they come and blow that time out the way. With our protest, we are going to send a document out to all clubs around the actual protest process for the, for the full games. Um, each protest will have a fee attached, of, which is $20, okay? So we do encourage you to put a protest in. Um, you know, you guys are responsible for your athletes. You're their advocate. So, you know, we encourage that. If there is a mistake, it could be something simple um, as a, a data entry mistake or some, some type of administration mistake. Um, there is a fee attached. If you're successful with your protest, um, there is no fee, okay? And again, a, a document will be going out just highlighting what that protest process looks like. Okay, anything to add, Dave, around PIDs? Yeah, look, um, yes, I, look, I understand this. There's, there's a little confusion um, for some people, but look, I think Gary's explained it pretty well. It's essentially if you... you Let's take an event and um, the entry time is 50 seconds. Doesn't matter what stroke it is. Um, you know that that swimmer can swim that event in a good time of 50, 50 seconds. If on the day um, in the prelims or the heats, they swim it in 80 seconds. In other words, they're a whole lot slower for whatever reason. Perhaps they had a bad hair day or you know whatever it is. They're just not on top of their game. Um, Look, that's your opportunity to come back to us and say, no, this swimmer can um, achieve this event in 50 seconds. Um, and that's where you use the PID form. Now, there will be staff available to help you complete these forms. If you don't complete it, um, the danger is that if he goes, that swimmer goes through to the finals, on finals day with a time of 80 seconds and you know they can do it in 50, they're going to um, unfortunately be DQ'd under the maximum effort violation, all right, the 15% rule that some people call it. All right, so it's it really means as coaches, team managers, you need to look at the results on a very regular basis and just compare times and make sure that uh, for the prelims and the heats, uh, the time that your swimmer has posted is an accurate record of what he is capable of. And I'd just like to also add that you cannot submit a made-up time. It must be, um, it must go back to the entry time. Um, so it has to be approved time. Okay. Thank you, Dave. And there is some information around that in your coach's tips from memory. Um, a couple of questions just before we move on that have come through on the chat. I am getting quite a few direct ones, so apologies if I don't get through all of them. There is a, a volume coming through. Can you clarify seating is, is that strictly for athletes and management, no spectators? So the seating at Waterworld, there's around 
750 is what I remember. Maybe they have some extended seating as well, so it could take it to 900. There is seating for spectators, but the area they will be sat is not to the detriment of our athletes and our coaches. So our coaches, our athletes will be closer to the competition pool than the spectators will be allowed. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, what about families who want to watch? Families will be able to watch. It can obviously come in and, you know, COVID uh, regulations are, are loose now as well. So families more than welcome to come in. They, they will have seats. Um, they can even stand at the top. Um, thank you, Carla. Yeah, look, that's one thing to say. It's, it's really important, you guys, as coaches, as their support system, to make sure your athletes know you're there. Um, so, yeah, no, that's good. Uh, okay. A uh, question here, uh, it's more of a comment just around Dev being bombarded with questions. Um, anything to do with meals and venue type questions will be going to Josie. Um, we're, we're obviously not going to focus on that this evening, but Josie at the event will manage that type of thing. And we have got there will be a, a large number of volunteers around as well supporting. So just to allow Dave to um, focus on the swimming. Um, I've had a question privately. Um, can video be used as part of a protest? Dave, do you want to answer that? No. Thank you, Dave. That was <laughs> no, it's quite simple. Um, no, it's, it's what the officials observe on the spot on the day. A good question, Carla. Forgot to submit this one. Any chance results could go on Meet Mobile so results can come direct to coaches' phones? This would solve the congestion at results wall when the PID hand in time is so short. Anything to add there, Dave? Um, yeah, look, if, um, we definitely need to look at this. Um, yes, yeah, the good technology. Um, uh, I think we need to get back to people on just how we're going to go about this. But yeah, I think we should definitely look at it. Okay. Thanks, Carla. That's great. We'll make a note of that, Dave, and we'll talk offline and talk to the Swim Waikato who are helping with... Uh, families have to pay pool entry. No, they don't. Fifteen hundred meter demo, Dave. Is it held in the fifty or the twenty-five meter pool? It's going to be. I can answer that one. It's going to be in the competition pool. So the lanes will all be removed. There'll be four boys thrown in, and it'll become open water swimming. I've said very different to swimming in the lane. Hopefully that answers those those questions. Apologies, we are flying through. I'm just conscious of our time. Um, uh, was a couple of questions, Dave, and what I'll do, I'll read them out and I'll get you to, to jump in and, and, and answer if we can. So will officials ensure swimmers stay in the water until the whistle goes? And if we are short on time, will this rule change? Um, I wonder if this can be some clarifications. Um, you've got ensure swimmers stay in the water until the whistle goes. You mean at the end of the race? Yeah, I think that's what's... I think that's the question, Dave. Yeah, at the end of the race. Okay. Yeah, look, this is something that, um, as coaches, I'd, I'd like you to talk to your swimmers about. Um, so at the end of the race, yes, they stay in their lane. Um, we encourage them to move away from the pad um, and just hug the lane rope. And the referee um, will blow two short blasts on their whistle. And that is the signal for the swimmers to clear the pool. So it's two short blasts of a whistle um, and yeah, that, that's an indication that the swimmers can can vacate the pool. 
out to the sides, please not over the uh, uh, touch pads. Um, excuse me, Dave. One of the issues that we've had before is that we trained everybody to do that. And then as it got shorter time, um, they were told to get out, like as soon as they'd finished, and some of them wouldn't leave because they didn't have the two whistle blasts. So it's sort of, if it takes quite a long time to train them to stay in the water. So just need to make sure that that won't change as I, the event goes on. I can assure you that won't change. It will will stick to, I, I understand, you know, the needs of some of our athletes and uh, we, uh, this is the protocol we'll be using, procedure we'll be using, so um, you can be assured that um, the swimmers stay in the water until they get the two whistles. Excellent, thank you. Awesome. Thanks, Carla. Okay, Dave, um, will we receive copies of the rules and protest forms, or do we need to bring our own? This come from a new coach. protest forms available at the event and the copies of the rules are available on our website we recommend you guys are, are looking at them already um, I would bring your own rules but protest forms will be available at the event so I'm not sure if you've got anything else to add into that Dev. yeah yeah no that um the, uh, the other thing is that if you are going to submit a protest and it's um, around one of the uh, the rules. You need to be able to state the rule, um, and uh, it needs to be factual. Um, so yeah, really important that you do have a copy of the swim rules with you at all times. Um, and as Gary said, there will be uh, protest forms available at the SID table. Cool. Thank you, Dave. Um, with Presentations, so this has come through from a lot of coaches I'm talking to. Will presentations be done throughout or at the end of a session? So do you want to jump in there, Dave? Yeah, look, um, again, we're not going to please everyone. It's, it's, a, it's a tricky one. Um, we do have the two options of um, one being we for example, have two presentation sessions, uh, one halfway through the final session and one at the end. So that's one option. Or the other option we're looking at is to have uh, one big presentation session um, right at the end of the final session. There are pros and cons for each approach. Um, Gary and I are going to just hold off on making a final decision until we see the uh, schedule um, and just see what the day is going to look like or each day is going to look like. So I think probably best that um, if you could just um, hold off for a couple of weeks and we'll get back to you on this one as soon as we can. Thanks. And a question around, will the non-racing end of the pool be sectioned off so that our athletes can warm up for races? Will it be completely open to the public? Um, you might want to add, add something here, Dev. We do have, so where the competition pool is, we also have the, the other pool as well. So there's actually another full pool, which will have lanes um, for athletes to warm up. But Dave might want to be, you can probably add a little bit more around the coaches and their process and how they might use use that pool. Yeah, thanks, Gary. Yeah. So, um, yes, there will be a warm up, warm down pool. Um, now, it's really important that it's treated as such. It's a warm up session or a warm down session. Um, coaches, can you please, or team managers, please monitor your uh, swimmers. What we don't expect to see is uh, swimmers, uh, you know, having a, um, a catch up um, or just um, uh, having a bit of a play or whatever. It's not designed for that. It's purely a warm up, warm down pool. Um, and it might mean someone from your um, team being present and just keeping an eye on, on your swimmers. 
Um, there will not be public admission at all. We have the pool complex, so there will be no public in the warm up, warm down pool at all. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you, Dave. So that was all the questions that were, were submitted. Um, I'm just going to check the group again now. If there happens to be a final with both men and women competing, will the two groups be separated? As in first, second, third men, first, second, third women, or are they all as one race? Do you want to jump in, Dave? Yeah, sorry, just to clarify, so we're talking about a combined final? We're talking about male and female competing together. Yes, no, it will not, it will not be um, separated. It will be treated as a combined event. So it will stand as first, second, third, whoever that is. Thanks. Um, and one other question that's just come through around family tickets, like, like at Wellington, or can they just turn up on the day? At this stage, um, what I can share, and I don't want to steal Josie's funder here, but athletes and volunteers and management, your bosses, when they drop you off, will drop you off right around the back of Waterworld. You will actually come in a private entrance. Um, I'm sure the athletes will love that. Um, straight onto the pool. Um, families will actually come into the main entrance at the front of the facility. They can just turn up and they'll be greeted by an information desk and then those guys will be wayfinding and showing them where they need to go. Okay. Um, so there will be a little bit of separation there. I know some coaches love that, um, keeping mum and dad away from from some of the athletes at those, those times where there's a bit of pressure on. So more information will come out on that stuff. Um, but yeah, in regards to family tickets, at this stage, no, there's going to be no need because those guys will come through. We still want to monitor who's coming in. Um, no need for tickets at this stage. So I'm just going to stop sharing screen so I can see everybody. Um, that's all the questions that were submitted. So thank you, Dave. Um, We've got around probably 10 minutes now. If, if anyone's got any burning questions for Dave or myself, um, look, more than happy for you to take, your, take yourself off mute and, and throw them out there. Gary, I was just, just wondering if I could just mention a couple of things because it could I could pretty well preempt some questions. Okay. Yep. Yeah, just a couple of things. Look, um, just want to, you know, thank uh, you guys, you know, coaches, especially, you know, all the hard work and preparing your swimmers. I know it's... Uh, um, ...undertaking. Um, just a couple of extra points. I already asked this question. First one is, um, will there be a strobe light available for the hard of hearing swimmers? And the answer is yes. Um, and at the team managers meeting, we'll um, point out to you exactly where that is so that during warm up time, your swimmers can um, perhaps have a practice with that. So, yes, there will be a strobe light. Um, the pads, yes, we are using electronic timing. Now, look, all the swimmers need to do is just touch the wall, touch the pads as they normally do. No special effort needs to take place. Um, although it might pay to just observe some of your swimmers. Sometimes we have what we call a soft touch, and that happens in mainstream as well. Um, and that's why we have um, back, a backup system. So we'll be operating buttons as well, which will record a time, and we'll more than likely have a, um, a timekeeper on a stopwatch. So we do have a backup system. If the swimmers uh, come, uh, have a, observe your swimmers and just make sure that they're touching the wall with a pretty firm touch. That's all that's needed. Nothing else special. Um, the other thing at the end of the race, if you could perhaps coach your swimmers to move away from the pad and just hug the lane rope, just a meter or so away from the pad, uh, that will keep their control room happy. Um, although they can, they can. Um, 
nine times out of ten they can work around that, that sort of issue but it just makes their life a little bit easier um i mentioned before please encourage your swimmers to exit the pool out the side so no climbing over the uh, um, touch pads at all and um, if you could encourage your swimmers to dive under the lane ropes and not over them um, we say this to our mainstream swimmers as well so it's not just our guys um, now we will um, utilize a false start rope um, and the reason for that is that um, if there is a false start for any reason um, there will be the the starter will activate um, an electronic beep and it will be a continuous beep um, and again you could perhaps uh, just talk to your swimmers about this so if they do hear a continuous beep and a lot of whistles it means stop we will also activate what we call a false start rope and it's a rope that will drop down across all lanes at the 15 meter mark now hopefully we'll be able to capture all swimmers although some swimmers uh, take it over it or swim over it and continue so no system is foolproof to stop the race and restart it so just again um it's mentioned in the coaches tips but just something to have a talk to your swimmers about it and just to get them to perhaps realize why it's there um if it does happen why it's happening and and the reason for it and so on hey dave um, just just on that dave there's a couple of questions that's come come out from what you were talking about if the swimmers touch the top of the wall, does that register with the touch pads? Uh, it depends. Yes, pretty much so. Yeah, there's. I mean, there's a. It's a massive pad. I mean, it's um, you know, two two point five meters wide and it goes from the top and you know below the water. Um, yeah, more than likely. But okay. as I said, if it doesn't register, we do have backup uh, systems to record the time. Cool. And also, Dave, when athletes are exiting the pool is there a ladder that that will be there to assist them i'm pretty sure the answer is yes wendy you might be able to help me here i'm pretty sure um at the I'll start end of that. Is, I yeah i can check yeah. on that we, there's something we yeah. can check on yeah but i'm pretty yeah. confident there are ladders either side mm. Okay. Yeah, they are, but they've got holes in the wall to step up onto the True. rail. There's no in the water ladder. Well, there are, but they're at the other end. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, just a couple of things, Wendy. Um, just a couple of more uh, extra points. Um, the 25 meter events will start on the bulkhead. All right. Now, I think you all are aware of what a bulkhead is. Um, now we will give the swimmers um, in the 25 meter events a warm up session just uh, uh, for those swimmers. So they can practice walking onto the bulkhead. Um, they can practice their uh, dives if they need to from the concourse or from the start block and they will swim um, into the pads from, from that end. And um, I'd just like to size though it's a little deeper at that point it's 1.6 meters so again you know the swimmers just something the swimmers need to be aware of okay most swimmers can cope with that but it's just um, a heads up for them now something else that uh, we're very lucky to have at Waterworld is um, track start ledges on the start blocks um, and most complexes around New Zealand have them now but if you don't um, when you arrive at Waterworld um, during the warm-up session, really good, be really sorry, valuable to teach your swimmers how to use those track start ledges. They are adjustable, um, and it's up to the swimmer to adjust them to a position that's comfortable for them. Um, I think there's five five different settings. Um, it's about them getting up and trying which setting is most suitable for them. Um, and remembering that every time they use the dive block, 
they set that track start ledge at three, four, five, whatever it is. All right, so um, if you've got uh, track start ledge, encourage them to uh, use them and uh, you know to find out um, what's the best setting for them. And final point for me is marshalling. Just a reminder that um, you, as coaches, team managers, you may take your swimmers to the marshalling area and that's where you leave them, all right? Unless you have an A code, all right? Now that A code, of course, means that that swimmer needs a little bit of extra assistance um, for whatever reason. Um, if you haven't, if your swimmer has not got an A code, unfortunately, you will not be allowed into the marshalling area or on pool deck, okay? So, um, yeah, when you're sorting out the exception codes, that's um, something to keep in mind. Thanks, Gary. Uh, that's, that's all from me. I'm you know, happy to answer any questions. Yep. So a couple of questions have come through there, Dave. I think, yeah. You've got a few people thinking, like you said. What about the T code? Is that the same? Sorry, which code? The T. Sorry. Oh, the tapper, yeah. Yeah. Look, if um, if your swimmer does need a, um, a, a T code, in other words, a tapper, um, yeah, look, um, please apply for it. It's, you know, there's, there's a number of reasons why they might need it. Um, might need it. Um, the most obvious one is the hard of hearing. Um, so if your swimmer has been training with a tapper, yeah, certainly use it. Okay. And with the marshalling, Dave, we're we looking around six events ahead. Yes, the announcer will keep us informed, but normally five to six events. Okay. But um, on the day, we will keep an eye on that. Um, and the announcer will brief everyone. Awesome, great. And one question around the bulkhead. Um, one of our coaches can't quite remember what the bulkhead looks like. Is there? Does that cause any complication for the for the athletes who start in the water? No, no, it, it shouldn't because it's it's essentially just a metal structure, um, um, and it just replicates the start end. So it's got dive blocks. It's got the backstroke ledges. Uh, or hand grips rather. Um, I don't see any issues at all, to be quite honest. Um, if the swimmer needs to enter the water via the side, um, it's just the same procedure. So I think you know the, the most important thing is during the warm-up session to allow your swimmers um, a time just to familiarise themselves with it, um, because it will be new for some and it will be different, um, yeah. but it's quite safe. Cool. Thanks, Dave. And probably something I've been getting a few private messages. And it's just popped up again, just around the size of the pool. It is 25 meters. That's the pool we're using. Great. So, okay. All right. That's all the questions in the chat, Dave. And I'm just conscious we've got three minutes, three or four minutes left. Has anybody got any burning questions for Dave? Um, feel free to take your yourself off mute and. Dave will do his best to answer. I can see a few people's lips. Just while you, but yeah, just while you're thinking about a question. Take yourselves off mute, guys. Um, look, if you do, if a question crops up in the weeks um, coming up, um, please feel free to email Gary and myself, um, or maybe Josie, um, if it's a question around uh, venue management. And look, we'd be happy to answer them. And I will follow up tomorrow with, with some links and an email with all this stuff in there so you guys have got it. Um, and forward up, and you, you'll also be able to forward that on to your other people in your clubs. Okay. All right. Any questions? Last call? Last call for oh, questions? Just, sorry, this is me again. Um, maximum effort. If we've got a, if you've got a race with a quite a wide, wider than the normal 15, are we just and some of the slower athletes where they don't fit into that, the, sorry, not being very clear, the gap between the athletes times is longer than 15% anyway. Well, how do they work that one? 
No, remember the maximum effort only applies for finals. So on the on um, the prelims and heats, it it does not apply. So all the all the swimmers are doing and doing the prelims is posting a time. All right, it's um, only in the final session that the um, maximum effort applies, and this is taken care of through the divisioning process, um, which um, Stacy will be involved with, and there's certain criteria that she has to look at. Um, when she uh, constructs each division. Does that answer the question? Um, yes, sort of. So it's, if there's not very many, um, like at the bottom of level, you might find that there is a greater margin in the last race. If you yeah. say I've only got four or five in it and there's two really slow ones, will they run those two slow ones separately? Um, the guidelines suggest we need to have a, max, a minimum of three swimmers. But look, this is something Stacey looks at very, very carefully. And um, yeah, it's, it, it, it can be a juggling game. Look, she just, uh, how can I put this? She, she looks at it and comes up with um, divisions that she thinks are fairest for all swimmers. Um, and that's probably the easiest, all I can say about that really. It's um, we, sometimes, yeah, there are, there are wide discrepancies. Um, yeah, look, we just, we just have to take it on the day. Okay, sweet, thanks. Awesome. All right, we're going on eight o'clock team. So thank you very much. Um, again for for joining us tonight and I appreciate the feedback you guys that you know I'm getting quite a few messages privately and in the group so look no need to thank us we really just want to make this the best we possibly can for our athletes um, and that means obviously providing you guys with as much comms as we can around the sport so thanks to Josie and Dave for jumping on as well I will follow up tomorrow with an email to you guys with the emails you provided um, please feel free to share it. I'll, I'll point you in the direction of the links to the coaches tips. I will try and download this recording this evening as well. So you can forward that on as well. Um, might be a big file, so I'll put it onto the, get it put onto our website. All right. Thank you. Thanks again, everybody. Have a nice yeah. night. Thanks guys. Thank you. Thank you. See you guys.